next on Newsmax Prime. Leftists in the press continue to press Donald Trump for the conditions that might prompt him to leave the campaign trail. But Donald says there's no need to depart because he's still leading in the polls. Meantime, will Carly Fiorina find that things go better with Coke? Reports indicate the ex-CEO could pick up some key financial backers. Plus, when Britain's back was to the wall, when king and country were threatened by Nazis, the prime minister appealed to the king of kings, God and Churchill, the topic of a new book, and we'll talk with its author. Newsmax Prime starts right now. Good evening. Welcome to the Monday night edition of Newsmax Prime. I'm J.D. Hayworth of Prime Interest Tonight, polls, their tolls, and what those numbers may mean in the Republican presidential race. The latest survey from the Wall Street Journal and NBC News still has Donald Trump on top, but with the margins tightening. In Iowa, the Donald remains in the lead at 24 percent. Ben Carson is in second at 19 percent. Carly Fiorina rates third, garnering only a third of the support that Trump enjoys in the Hawkeye state. It is a little different in New Hampshire, but not at the top. Trump leads with 21 percent. Then comes Carly Fiorina, trailing by five percentage points at 16 percent. Then Jeb Bush third, 11 percent, and a tie for fourth with both Ben Carson and Marco Rubio at 10 percent. Of course, polling is an important measure of any campaign, but another key indicator is fundraising. While Donald Trump has made it clear that as a billionaire he will self-fund his campaign, two other billionaires could cast their lot with Carly. Miranda Kahn has more from our Newsmax Prime newsroom. Miranda? J.D., sources close to Charles and David Koch say Carly Fiorina's solid performance during the second national debate last month, combined with her corresponding surge in the polls, has prompted the billionaires to take a, quote, serious look at the former Hewlett Packard chief executive. Right now, many view Fiorina as the most effective candidate for going head-to-head -head with GOP frontrunner Donald Trump. As for Mr. Trump, he appeared on Meet the Press yesterday. He scored points with supporters of the Second Amendment, questioning why there are even gun-free zones. You could make the case that uh, the school that we just, you know, went through, and I see it was a gun-free zone. You were not allowed to have guns at all in that particular area. And you can make the case that it would have been a lot better had people had guns because they had something to fire back. You say you can make that case. Do you make that case? Well, I would, I would say that it couldn't be much worse. I think the police did a great job. They got there quickly and they were able to kill them. But you can I can make the case that if there were guns in that room other than his, fewer people would have died, fewer people would have been so horribly injured. As for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton went on the Today Show reacting very strongly to the Benghazi committee hearings. The appearance follows last week's gaffe made by Speaker candidate Kevin McCarthy. Now, you may recall that during that interview, McCarthy suggesting that Clinton's poll numbers went down as a result of Benghazi Select Committee. That gaffe has now turned into a new tool for Democrats to use against the committee who say the comment illustrates a partisan sham. Mrs. Clinton continued with that theme earlier today. I would never have done that. Look at, the, look at the situation they chose to exploit to go after me for political reasons. The death of four Americans in Benghazi. I knew the ambassador. I identified him. I asked him to go there. I asked the president to nominate him. There have been seven investigations led mostly by Republicans in the Congress, and they were nonpartisan, and they reached conclusions that, first of all, I and nobody did anything wrong, but there were changes we could make. This committee was set up, as they have admitted, for the purpose of making a partisan political issue out of the deaths of four Americans. I would have never done that. And if I were president and there were Republicans or Democrats who were thinking about that, I would have done everything to shut it down. Kevin McCarthy's comments have opened the door to others interested in running for the speakership, including Utah Congressman Jason Chavitz. J.D., back to you. Thanks, Miranda. For more on politics this Monday night, we're pleased to be joined by Reagan biographer Craig Shirley. He is the author of the soon-to-be-released book, Last Act. 
the final years and emerging legacy of Ronald Reagan. Of course, Craig, also the president of Shirley and Bannister Public Affairs. We're also joined tonight by John Zogby, senior analyst at Zogby Analytics. John, the co-author of First Globals, Understanding, Managing, and Unleashing our millennial generation. Gentlemen, thanks to you both for making some time here on Newsmax Prime. So, Mr. Trump's lead is shrinking. Is Carly the one who will emerge if the Donald's numbers continue to diminish? John Zogby, first to you. At least for now, I think she's, she's hot. Her performances actually in both debates were good, and she is you know, within this context of a lot of candidates surging. The Koch brothers' announcement today um, of, of possible financial support, a lot of financial support, uh, is, is nothing but a boost for her. So at least for the moment, Carly is somebody to really watch. Long way to go, though. All right, uh, Craig, let me turn to you. I'm going to ask uh, for your clairvoyance here to get inside the mind of the Donald. He continues to answer these questions that if his numbers tanked, he would leave the race. Are people correct in interpreting that this might be a message that he could eventually plan to, uh, to exit the stage and leave the contest? No, actually, I think J.D. is what he's doing is he's brilliantly lowering expectations. You know, for the last couple months, expectations have started getting a little bit wildly out of control for him. You know, as he's he's got he's clearly got one quarter of the Republican electorate that is firmly with him and will be him with him for the long haul. He needs to obviously, as John knows, and you know, he needs to build upon on that. But he also needs to lower expectations. So it probably was a good move on his part uh, to do so. Craig, another candidate who is really sliding in the polls is Jeb Bush. He showed up at 7% in the NBC News Iowa poll. Uh, do you believe Governor Bush is ready to walk away from the race? I think that he's got to be looking at the handwriting on the wall. He's obviously got a super PAC that's got over $100 million in it. But you can't run just a simply negative campaign and uh, paint everybody as uh, being unqualified to be president of the United States. And that's really what his, the last card he's got to play. He's tried to play the card that he was a good governor and he uh, did reforms there. And it just isn't, you know, dogs just aren't uh, eating that dog food right now. And I don't think that the end of the nomination is going to work for him either. I think that you may see in the next uh, couple months, uh, Jeb Bush very quietly uh, reassessing his candidacy. Craig Shirley. We thank you for your time and your input tonight here on Newsmax Prime. Now let's bring in political commentator Michael Reagan. You can find and follow Michael on Twitter at Reagan World. He joins us via Skype from California. So, Michael, Hillary went ballistic this morning on NBC's Today Show trying to use Kevin McCarthy's comments of last week to restart her stalled campaign. Will that do the trick? It looks like she's in real trouble in the latest Democrat polls. No, that's not going to do anything to re-fire up her campaign. You know, Hillary's problem is not Kevin McCarthy. Hillary's problem is Hillary Rodham Clinton. And, and I think everybody knows that by now. Kevin McCarthy made a stupid blunder speaking to Sean Hannity the other night on Fox. But the reality of it is the reason that Hillary is where she is in the polls is because of Hillary Clinton. All right, well, let me turn to our pollster, John Zogby. Uh, Hillary's uh, continued decline in the polls. Did, did Kevin McCarthy throw her a life raft, in essence? Oh, no, that's, that's an overstatement. I agree totally with Michael. It was dumb on Kevin McCarthy's part, something that could be utilized later on, maybe even in the congressional races as well. But Hillary's problem is indeed Hillary. And her problem is very similar to Al Gore's in 2000. She reinvents herself every few days. Here's a woman that everyone knows. When you reinvent yourself uh, constantly, you play into really what is the major critique of Hillary, which is just who is she? Who is she portraying herself to be? And the constant reinvention does not make her look any more authentic. With the minute that remains, let me shift from the White House to that race in the House for the speakership. Michael Reagan, taking a look at the Republican field now, does Jason Chaffetz have the leg up to become the next speaker over McCarthy? No, not really. Kevin McCarthy's got the votes he's going to need in the House of Representatives, being the GOP leader. Chaffetz, nice man, 
good leader and what have you, but there just aren't enough conservative votes in the House of Representatives to turn the leadership over and the gavel to Shabbos. All right, now let me just close out with John Zogby and the perception of the Republican brand. Does this strife in the House hurt the GOP overall? It doesn't help the GOP overall. And remember, the GOP goes into next season, whether it's on the presidential level or on this, the Senate and congressional level, severely wounded. Plus, it still has to decide who it really is. Uh, it's got a demographic problem, and it's got a serious ideological split within. And that ideological split, Michael, you say for the time being in the House that it still favors the establishment and Kevin McCarthy in that leadership race, about 30 seconds. It's really interesting. People are conservative until there's a vote. Then it becomes establishment candidate candidate against a conservative candidate. Kevin McCarthy is a conservative. He may be thought of as, a, as an establishment guy, but he is a conservative. The problem that's going on right now with the conservatives are, is this. They're like the dog that chased the car and caught the car. Now they don't know what the hell to do. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, Michael Reagan, thanks so much for your time and that last metaphor. Again, you can find and follow Michael on Twitter at Reagan World, and of course to our friend John Zogby, our thanks as well. And this programming reminder, tomorrow night at 7, Dr. Ben Carson sits down with Steve Malsberg for a one-on-one -on -one interview. Can the good doctor surpass current frontrunner Donald Trump? We'll hear what he has to say in his own words tomorrow night at 7, only here on Newsmax TV. And as always, we want to know what you think. Do you think Dr. Carson might pass the Donald? Which candidate do you want to vote for? Vote in our online poll right now at NewsmaxPolls.com. That's NewsmaxPolls.com. Still ahead, a warning to colleges in the Philadelphia area post-Oregon. Bernie Carrick will be here to talk about it.